live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening. Leading your news this Friday, AFL boss Gil McLaughlin has remained tight-lipped on when a Tasmanian licence might officially be signed off while visiting Hobart today. But a new in-principle agreement with the state government sees the deal edge a step closer as the league boss reaffirms his priority to get the job done. Inviting investors to embrace a big vision for the nation's game, Gillan McLaughlin was looking to sell the island state. It's about 5,000 people travelling down here from the mainland for every AFL game. Visiting the capital for a corporate conference, he revealed a local team in the competition is close to the final tick, with an in-principle agreement on commercial terms now reached between the AFL and the state government. Ultimately that will become a binding agreement with the government. We've come a long way with our clubs and so they've had detailed information around um, every aspect of the bid. There's 11 points. Uh, this is a great step forward. A step forward that will bring with it even increased momentum. The Premier alongside him to continue pushing the merit of a Mac Point Stadium. Dropping a hint in his press release the team could take on the Tasmanian Devil's name. Every single stadium project uh, in the last decade has had you know, a rough ride of it. Uh, but no pain, no gain and uh, we have a lot to gain in Tasmania. With a business case now being prepared, federal government funds still remain a crucial factor for the development. The processes will be transparent. We wouldn't say no to something that we, have never, that we haven't seen the detail of and we won't say yes to something that we haven't seen the detail of. Political and community opposition, another hurdle to overcome. While Jeremy Rockliffe might be a complete pushover, to Gil McLaughlin, Tasmanians aren't. As a result of the latest milestone, the Hawks have confirmed they'll continue to call Launceston home next year, but no word yet on the Kangaroos' return. It's still unclear when the league boss's tenure in the top job will come to an end and whether he'll even be the one responsible for handing down this long-awaited licence. They take as long as they take and, and, I, and I'm not, I just, I point to Optus Stadium, a point to Adelaide Oval. I mean, that, 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 there's the case in point, and this is worth waiting for. For the game's legends like Royce Hart, they see it as an opportunity that needs to be taken now before it's too late. It's the last chance that they'll get because I think if it goes on too much longer, football won't be the number one sport here in Tasmania. Grace Evans, 7 Tasmania News. Hobart's waterways will be getting busier with the Derwent Ferry service set for expansion. Local councils have welcomed the funding promised by the federal government and they're hoping for more. In 1975, Hobartians were moving to the ferry boat shuffle. Now the ferry boat shuffle is a thing to do. Hurry on down and join the queue. But it's more of a sprint now. A Bell Reeve to Brook Street Derwent River service was brought back last year and now there's a boost from the federal government. Part of an exciting expansion of services for the ferries and that was a $20 million commitment. We are a river city and we should be using the river for public transport. The new terminals tap into Glenorchy, Lindisfarne and Sandy Bay. It's a really key location, Wilkinson's Point, because we do have the My State Bank Arena there. We also have the Elwick Racecourse uh, nearby as well. There's no timeline yet, but more expansions already being floated. Kingborough and Brighton to be considered. This is an important first step in the expansion of the ferries in Greater Hobart. We should be having ferries traversing the length and breadth of our beautiful, majestic Derwent River. The state government revived the peer-to-peer -peer service. They agree it has a buoyant future. I couldn't be more pleased about the success that we've, that we've been able to enjoy and it's good to see the federal government supporting it. Hobartians have taken to the ferries like ducks to water with 145,000 travellers in just over a year. Our surveys tell us that two thirds of ferry passengers, if the ferry wasn't here, they'd be on the Tasman Bridge every morning and afternoon in their vehicles. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. A new report has found Tasmanians who are already feeling the pressure at the pump are paying more for transport than in any other capital city. But the state's peak motoring body says there are ways to save, urging drivers to shop around. 
filling up on fuel but draining. The bank, Tasmania's transport prices are the worst in the country, according to the Australian Automobile Association's latest affordability index. The report measures how much of a household's income goes towards getting around, with the cost of petrol taking a big bite out of the family budget. Pretty uh, annoying, frustrating really, considering what the prices were some time ago. We are subject to the, uh, the market in South East Asia and there's huge demand now because uh, we have a lot of recovering economies there uh, and the demand is exceeding supply. On average, Hobartians are spending 17.6% of their income on transport, 2.2% above the national capital city average, while Launceston topped the charts as the least affordable regional city. The margin between the wholesale and the retail price for unleaded is where it should be, about 9 to 10 cents a litre. Diesel's about twice that, however. I have a diesel ute, so um, I've really noticed it there. It's up to 249. It's really expensive, it's crazy. But it all depends on where you go. There's some considerable variation in price, up, up to 8 to 10 cents a litre for unleaded. The RSET is encouraging drivers to shop around for the lowest price, also pumping out tips to cut Bowser bills by 25%, including avoiding harsh acceleration and braking, ensuring not to leave a stationary vehicle idling for too long and removing unnecessary weight from the car, like roof racks that aren't in use. Small changes that could result in big savings. Brianna Boylan, 7 Tasmania News. A newly formed alliance is fighting for a Tasmanian Human Rights Act. The group says potential violations are occurring all across Tasmanian custodial settings, workplaces, aged care and supported accommodation facilities and more. A rally will be held next Saturday on Parliament lawns. The Treasurer says an overarching Human Rights Act isn't needed, with strong protections already included in our laws. Tasmanian potato farmers are sounding the alarm as another year of bad weather threatens crops. With shortages already hitting shelves, they say something needs to change before the problem grows any bigger. Supermarkets apologise for not having the usual supply of frozen chips as shortages of one of our most basic foods begin to bite. Farmers have been hampered by bad weather for the past year, delaying planting and harvesting. It rain, just constant rain. I thought last year was tough, but this year's even tougher. John's Ledgerwood property has been growing potatoes for half a century. He's dropped his crop size by a third this year, saying the weather and the risk isn't worth it. It's around 20,000 plus a hectare to grow potatoes. And the risk factor of that is high, very high. If just one of those hectares doesn't yield, it takes the profits from the next four just to break even. Right now, Australia's food security is at risk. Farmers receive 10% or less of the retail price for their products and just 1% for fast food. We need some of that corporate profit that tallies in the billions. We need that to come back to the farm gate so that can flow up through the supply chain. With sky-high growing costs, some are worried the next generation of potato farmers won't be able to get started, feeding the problem. If you've got to come up with the, the capital to plant potatoes to any scale at all, it would be a very hard road. The chair of the TFGA's Vegetable Council says potato shortages are just the beginning. We're going to see this issue across a lot, a lot of different categories. The state government says help is available for farmers. We work as a government, we work closely with the TFGA. Um, my door is always open to farmers. Hoping to grow a more positive future. Annie Green, 7 Tasmania News. Meanwhile, beef and berries have been touted as Tasmania's big winners in celebrations for National Ag Day. Food production in the state has grown by 10%, according to a recently released agri-food scorecard. Today we have the opportunity to celebrate how resilient, how innovative, um, how creative and successful our farmers are being right across Tasmania. It's a really impressive time. Our cherries are growing as well. We actually grow more, more raspberries and blackberries here in Tasmania than any other state. The state's agriculture industries are worth more than $2 billion to the economy. 
the state government is defending its commitment to reopen a popular Launceston swim centre. Labor is calling on the government to deliver on its election promise to repair and reopen the Glenju Learn to Swim Centre. Because it's an even depth pool, uh, they can hold a kickboard and just walk around. And once they feel that security, then you can start to teach them to learn to swim. We have a government that committed to fund the uh, repairs and replacement and upgrade of this swimming pool and failing to do it at the same time when apparently we're going to have an indoor stadium in Hobart. The government says it has increased its investment in the project to nearly $3.5 million and appointed architects. Water safety programs are going ahead at other pools while the upgrade is completed. And Labor is claiming the state government is behind on another election commitment of employing more TASTAVE teachers. The Liberals vowed to deliver 100 new staff over four years, funding 25 of those positions by the middle of this year. But so far it claims only 12 have been filled. This was a government that talked big about TAFE reform, saying that TAFE would be in a better position to attract highly qualified trainers to work within their organisation and it seems like they just can't live up to their promises. The Minister for Skills, Training and Workforce Growth, Felix Ellis, still maintains they'll reach the four-year target. The Breaker Day Council says an alternate route to the east coast is urgently needed. The St Mary's Pass is still blocked, while Elephant Pass is in poor condition with lane closures. Freight, tourism and schooling have all been impacted. The government will work with the council to look for and explore a long-term secure access through these routes and if that includes looking at feasibility for new accesses, we're open to that. The Transport Minister is visiting the area tomorrow to meet with the Mayor. A master plan for Tasmania's Northern Gateway has been released with proposals to upgrade and develop new precincts on the northwest coast. Over the next decade, Devonport Airport will take off with tourism and travellers set to benefit. A vision for the future of flying. We're very, very proud and happy to, to launch our master plan, which will provide guidance for investments and growth opportunities um, for the next 15 years. What's good for the North West is good for Tasmania, and we have got um, exciting times ahead. The Northern Gateway will see the development of multiple precincts. Facilitating more investment, particularly around commercial, industrial, and fuel and better passenger amenity services. The proposed airside precinct will also prioritise an extension of the existing runway, opening the door for more services to take off. We'll be able to see our 1.8 kilometre airstrip grow to just over two kilometres so that we can see jet aircraft with the capability of distances as far as Brisbane coming into and out of DPO. That's the future. Providing passengers with more travel options. Last financial year, more than 45,000 passengers transited through here and we know that it's capable of much more. In an effort to transform Devonport into one of the best regional airports in the country, the master plan focuses on six key objectives. Ensuring sustainability, strategic planning, facilitating future development opportunities, improving economic returns, enhancing aviation-related and regional economic activity, and delivering commercial outcomes for the community. We have a very clear vision for the future. We are positioning the Devonport Airport precinct as the key tourism and business gateway to Tasmania's northwest and the Cradle Coast region. Making Devonport Airport open for business. McKenna Bailey, 7 Tasmania News. A federal investigation into 2018's frightening train derailment in Devonport has found a fault with the remote controls caused the near disaster. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau says the equipment failed to stop the train at Railton where it was to be loaded with cement. It rolled unmanned and uncontrolled for more than 20 minutes through 10 active level crossings before crashing. Two people suffered minor injuries. Tasrail has stopped using the remote control equipment. Tasmanians are being urged to dig deep and buy a Big Mac tomorrow for McHappy Day, raising funds in support of Ronald McDonald House, which for many is a vital sanctuary at their most desperate time. It's a little bundle of joy ready to meet their parents. But for Taylor and Mitchell Cordell, their 32-week unborn babies and patients has proved a challenge. Our little baby has been trying to come out since about 20 weeks. Then we had emergency surgery at uh, 22 weeks. 
The Launceston couple forced to stay in Hobart for a number of weeks until it's safe to return home. A costly and stressful journey made easier for them by Ronald McDonald House. It's like a home away from home. It's really welcoming. It's all so uncertain for us and to find out that we could stay here at Ronald McDonald House, like, it was a huge relief. The 11 bedroom complex gives families of sick kids and high risk pregnancies somewhere to live. However, it's not cheap, with running costs sitting at $160 per room per day. McDonald's is running McHappy Day tomorrow, and members of the public are being asked to get hungry for hamburgers. We'll be selling um, Big Macs, and $2 from every Big Mac will come directly to the houses. The house also creating bonds between people that last a lifetime. We've become like family and friends to those people and they couldn't possibly have done without this house. The Cordells are on board, saying it's been a haven in a hectic time. It's so perfect to have it just literally across the road, like, yeah, it's amazing. Since being here, like, your contractions have completely mm. gone, really. Yeah. And you haven't had any pain or anything, like, yeah. I think it was a lot of stress related. John Hunt, 7 Tasmania News. Key players from the Tasmanian performing arts industry are joining up to identify and discuss challenges faced by the sector. Performing Lines Taz has held its third Art Sector Day at Launceston's Princess Theatre. It's really a valuable day for so many of us that work alongside each other, create new theatre works, artworks and festivals to kind of all get together and talk about sector-wide challenges and uh, kind of the, the you know the opportunities going forward in the next few years. It's been a chance for everyone to recalibrate post the start of COVID and how we were closed down as a sector. Now as we're coming out of that we're a little bit beaten and misshapen but we're finding our feet. 71 delegates from across the state attended. Teachers at a Launceston High School have made a splash as Queechy students raised thousands of dollars to help find MND. Some of the school's favourite teachers took the plunge for the cause. We really want Mr Fleming, our school principal, to go down the slide. Um, he's in Devonport right now. We're hoping he'll make it back in time. They managed to raise more than $2,500 for research. Mignon Dupria is in stunning form for the Hurricanes. The South African smashed three sixes on her way to 75 against the Adelaide Strikers. And that is the cost right there. Sure you get 150. Hurricanes, who were bowled out for 154. Hayley Jensen began her spell in sensational fashion, clean bowling the Strikers opener for a duck. But the Strikers chased down the target in less than 15 overs, winning by eight wickets. The Jack Jumpers return to Launceston tonight against the New Zealand Breakers. Tasmania is breaking even at five wins and five losses so far. Newly re-signed skipper Clint Steindl will suit up for the first time this season, along with Will Magnay. The game is sold out, tip-offs in half an hour. The son of a former Adelaide Crow star is among five Tasmanians about to have their first serious taste of life in the AFL. Jack Callanan is among those heading to the AFL Academy, where tomorrow's champions see what it's like at Clubland firsthand. He's a small forward with a dangerous boot. Now Jack Callanan is about to slot into the AFL system, heading advice from Dad Ian, who spent three years at the Crows. He just talks to me about being really competitive um, in everything, so... Whether that's a training or in a game, you know, just being competitive with everything you do. That will to win has singled out Jack for the AFL Academy, an invite-only ticket to an AFL club, nurturing a player's physical and mental mettle. The reality is that they, they have to have some interest from AFL and AFLW clubs to be invited into this academy and, and get the opportunity, so it's a big feather in the cap. Georgia Clark also made the cut. The Glenorchy Premiership player is inspired by how the women's top-level league has evolved encouraging seeing the growth of the game and the opportunities like it's going to be a whole different game in the future. She's got a commodity that um, is hard to find in AFLW is that she can she's got a fantastic contested mark like she's a one-touch mark player. Jack Callanan will be joined by Launceston's Colby McKercher at the academy while Georgia class Glenorchy teammate Brooke Barwick is also heading along plus former North Launceston player Riley Sanders who now plays with Sandringham. As a promising cricketer, Jack may have to one day decide which sport to pursue, but if he becomes a Sharon specialist, the future looks bright. To play at any club would be unreal, so yeah, I'm not real t I'm not fussed. He's left no stone unturned over the off-season to get himself in some really good physical condition, so yeah, extremely excited about what Jack can um, produce. A big leap towards realising that potential. 
And with a wet point to pinnacle possibly in store for Sunday, tonight's Friday flashback is to when bad weather forced the event to be shortened for the first time. In 2001, the point to pinnacle became the point to pub following a wintry whiteout. A snow-capped Mount Wellington was a common sight in frosty 2001. Fun for some, especially those who got a day off school, but not so fun for those training for the Point to Pinnacle. A cold snap closed access to the mountain for all but skiers in the weeks leading up to the event. There'll be no relief from these conditions for a couple of days yet. Still, 1,200 shivering athletes braved the elements on that cold Sunday morning. Their run reduced to a Point to Pub for the first time in the event's seven-year history. We had to look at alter an alternative and the best one that we could come up with was a return run to the Fern Tree Tavern and back. As shoes and showers pounded the pavement and police kept road closures in check, some opted for a brisk walk along the course, but not Jerry Oldfield, who was in a hurry to get out of the rain. He set a blistering pace to the pub and back, although he lamented a big chunk of the challenge was missing. Because I would like to run to the top of the mountain, but... Uh... A win to win, isn't it? The whiteout made for a pretty picture and spared major punishment for the runners, but there are no plans to change the usual course at this stage when this year's Point to Pinnacle takes place on Sunday. Good evening. Bit of a change of outfit tonight due to McHappy Day being on tomorrow. $2 from every Big Mac sold will go to help Ronald McDonald House charities for families with extremely ill children. Hope you can help out tomorrow. Today, temperatures are on the improve. Hobart, Burnie and Devonport all 17. Launceston, the state's warmest, with 22 degrees. Bushy Park, 21. Friendly Beaches and Strawn, 20. King Island, 19. Flinders Island, Smithton and Lowhead, 18. St Helens, 17 today. Sunny conditions mainly over the north today, but some convective cloud did slide in over the the picture as well. The frontal band moved over South Australia as more cloud pushed over WA, patchier cloud over eastern parts. Tomorrow a cold front approaches us from the west so that nice one day we had will soon be a distant memory as the weather cracks up over the weekend. A couple of troughs are over the mainland. The winds nor'easterly tomorrow reaching 20 to 30 knots over the northwest before increasing over all waters. We have a strong wind warning that's in place from Flinders Island clockwise around and back up to Stanley. A minor flood warning has been issued for the Macquarie and Meander rivers and an initial flood watch for parts of the north, northwest and northeast. Saturday in Hobart, expecting a top of 22 with showers developing. Showers on the way for Medina 21 and 20 the top for Oatlands. Launceston, a high of 22 with rain developing. Rain on the way for Devonport 18, 13 the high for Lyawini. Burnie, a top of 16, 22 for Strawn, but rain later in the day. Marrow wore the same, but 19 the high there. And St Helens, showers developing 18, 19 for Swansea, a shower or two for Orford, 19. No matter what it's like on the East Coast, it'll be beautiful for the Bishno Festival on the weekend. Have a great day. Uh, UV, a very high nine as the sun attempts to stay up until 8.15pm. On Sunday, fresh and gusty westerly winds and rain or showers for most districts. Monday now and a shower or two continuing. Snow lowering to 500 metres. Winds becoming colder southwesterly. And on Tuesday, partly cloudy over the central north and east with a few showers elsewhere. A shower as well in Perth. Possible storms for Adelaide and Melbourne. Sunny though in Sydney, 25 degrees dry and warm the forecast for Brisbane and currently it's 16 degrees in Hobart and Launceston in Devonport right now it's 15. Kim looking forward to my happy day tomorrow actually I've got to tell you this I once saw a Big Mac run 100 meters in nine seconds now that's fast food oh dear well, that's the biggest smile I've seen on you in a while too that is all your news for now enjoy your Friday night with Seven Tasmania from now from the news team it's good night